with authority. Welcome to another edition of the With Authority podcast, quarantine style. Larry Beal, Casey Pratt, Chris Alvarez, special guest star is Sabrina Ganescu, who we have been trying to have you on for a while. You probably don't even know about it behind the scenes, but we, we've been working. And finally, the day is here and we're just thrilled to have you. So thank you for taking the time out of your schedule just to start things off. No, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Best women's college basketball player in the country, no doubt, will be the number one pick in the WNBA draft in a few days. And a, a Walnut Creek product right here in our own backyard. We have some of the best of the best. So I, I, I'm going to start off since uh, we were joking before we began taping the guys. We're, we're saying, OK, it's going to be softballs and cream puff questions for Sabrina. <laughs> and I already warned you earlier that I've done a deep dive here. But we'll, we'll start out with the softball uh, because uh, obviously our whole world has changed just in the past few weeks. And in an alternate universe, you might be playing for a national championship or would have been the past few days. So how are you just dealing with the new normal that we're in and knowing that, wow, you could have been at the final four uh, just a few days ago? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unfortunate, especially looking back at memories from a year ago and um, seeing that we were at the final four last year and then you know, realizing that last Sunday would have been the national championship game. Uh, it, it is unfortunate and not being able to celebrate and, and hopefully have been there with, with my team, but um, still working out, still getting in the gym uh, if I can, going on walks, going to the park uh, before they took the basketball hoops down, um, reading, really just trying to do anything that I can to stay mentally and physically sharp because, you know, this, this will pass and have to make sure that I'm um, doing everything I can to, to stay sharp. I heard something about a pots and pans workout that you were doing that you mentioned on ESPN. What, what was that all about? Yeah, I mean, before I, had, um, before I had bought some stuff off Amazon Prime, like some medicine balls, some bands, I had nothing in my yard. So my mom had like a, some pots, some potatoes. Um, she had a pot of plants. And so I was using that to lift, to, um, did some RDLs with it, did some squats. Um, and now I got a, a medicine ball and some other things, so I'm I'm trying to use that more. <laughs> if we if you can give us some video of that, uh, that as Chris likes to say, that might go viral. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, all right, guys, start start with the cream puffs and softballs. Let's go, let's go. All right, so I wanted to ask this question because this has really been a year for you that's probably been defined by triumphs and tragedies. So. Mentally, especially going through all this right now, how are you handling all of this, this roller coaster you've been on? Who are you leaning on? Who are you talking to? I mean, how are you just getting through this crazy, crazy year? I mean, this has to be one of the hardest years of your entire life at this point. Uh, by far, uh, toughest year of my life. Um, I don't think I was expecting it to go like this just because, you know, returning from my senior year, I was excited to be able to play, to hopefully compete for a national championship and, and enjoy it. Um, and it, it definitely hasn't hasn't been that, um, but just you know, blessed to be in the position that I am, and kind of going through this stuff now with the season, um, you know, season ending, uh, kind of just being appreciative of everything that happened, and um, you know, along the way, leading on my teammates, my coaches, my family, friends, um, everyone that's been there for me, and it kind of puts into perspective what's really important in life and how a lot of things are bigger than basketball, and so. I think kind of just coming to that realization and, and being appreciative of that um, is what I've learned through these last three months. Sabrina, I was on Instagram today and I saw one of your latest posts. You were with Steph six feet away. Uh, was that from today? Yeah, I was literally just with him now, yeah. Is he going to sneak in and join the podcast too? <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be cool. Uh, what is your relationship like with Steph? Yeah, I mean – He's been my favorite player for 10 years now since he's been in the league. Um, and It's been cool to just see uh, kind of that relationship grow from him not knowing who I was and me watching him as a rookie. And until now, we're, you know, we're both um, kind of on the scene, basketball players from the Bay Area. And uh, it's been cool. You know, he comes to my games. I go to his. We talk often and you know, could be potential business partners if I sign with Under Armour. And so uh, I just with him you know today talking about that six feet away getting some shots up and 
our distance, but it is cool to see uh, how our relationship has grown. Did you outshoot him? Be, be honest. It's okay. He won't mind. I'll never outshoot him. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's awesome, though. I mean, the company you keep uh, is, is pretty amazing at this point. I, I would love, if we could get your phone, I would love to just scroll and see all the names of NBA players and famous people that you have. Uh, we could actually do that as a whole separate segment if you, if, I'm sure you don't want to do that. Um, let me go back a few years, okay? Because uh, before anybody knew who you were, uh, you and your brother would be going out and playing pickup games. And uh, I'm going to put this as kindly as I can. You guys were kind of hustling people for Slurpees. Is that not true? I mean, you're, you're, you're taking Slurpees from kids. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we went to the parks. Um, we went to the parks and we knew when to go. Noon was the perfect time because that's when um, the older people, no offense to anyone out there, that's when the older men would take their lunch breaks. So we knew we had to go around 12. <laughs> They'd take off of work and, and try and go play. And so um, we'd stay there all day playing at the park while our parents worked. And so, you know, we'd make deals, we'd make bets. Uh, I'd, I'd act like I didn't know how to play bet and then win. And then we'd go get some lunch, Slurpees, 7-Elevens right there. So if you saw me at the park shooting around, you'd go, that guy, easy mark <laughs> right there. Got, we're going we're gonna to get his wallet in a half an hour. <laughs> uh, I'm not, no comment. That's a yes. That's a yes. That's a yes. I'm going to take that as a yes, as an affirmative. All right. That's, you're probably right. You probably would have, would have had a very nice lunch in Walnut Creek. Maybe, maybe lettuce or someplace like that. Uh, uh, let me jump into this. So your, your brother, Eddie, is he in quarantine at home with you right now? Because I know you guys are very competitive. So I'm wondering if there's a way to keep that kind of competitive spirit alive when you're stuck in your house. Yeah, he is. Um, he went back to Eugene uh, for the weekend to get his car. But um, we are – he's more competitive on the NBA 2K video games at the moment. Um, that has taken over his entire quarantine. And so um, he's trying to perfect his game on video games at the moment, I think, along with every other boy that is in quarantine. But um, we're definitely still competitive, and we'll work out together and shoot together. Who can lift more pots and pans, you or him, at this point? I think it's me because he's too cool to lift pots and pans. So <laughs> I think. Oh, man. Sabrina, when did it hit you that you could be as good as you are on the doorstep of, you know, potentially being the number one pick in the WNBA? You're celebrated as the best college women's player in the game right now. When did you know that you were going to be this good? Never. Um, honestly, um, I really still don't see myself like that and, and picture myself like that. I know, you know, projections say I'm going to go one. And um, if I do, I'm, I'm blessed. And, and, you know, if not, then as long as I'm able to play at the next level, I'm excited to kind of take on that opportunity, the highs and lows that, you know, come with playing professionally. Um, but I know there was a lot of seniors, you know, that got their season cut short that will never play the sport again. And so happy to be able in a position to hopefully continue playing um, you know, but never really thought, you know, anything of the season or career I was going to have at, at Oregon and then, you know, kind of looking on into the future. What was that moment like when you got the word? I mean, things happened so quickly from the moment that they stopped that jazz game. And then five minutes later, we, we find out that, that uh, Rudy Gobert uh, has tested positive. Then another five minutes later, the whole league shuts down. I think then it was the next day, the NCAA shut down. That was, had to be just like a tsunami of emotions coming at you, realizing, oh, wow, I played my last college game and I had no idea that was going to be my last college game. For sure. Um, I think once I saw the NBA, Rudy Gobert get it, I, I had this kind of sense of, oh, crap, this is, this is going to happen to us as well. Um, didn't think that it would get shut down and it would completely stop. I thought maybe it could be pushed back or sped up and have done a tournament, you know, that weekend. Um, and so I don't think I was really processing the fact that, you know, I had played my last game in the Pac-12, you know, tournament um, as a duck. And so uh, obviously filled with a lot of emotions. Um, I wasn't with the team. We were, none of us were together. We were all in at home. We, or, you know, wherever we were, some people were at school and, so, you know, we got a text from our coach that just said, you guys can stay with your family, stay where you are. You don't have to come back to school. 
um, the tournaments off. And so obviously everyone was really sad. and That was what we were looking forward to. There had to be a lot of tears at that moment with, with all of your teammates, I would think. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had gone th- I have gone through so much these last three months that, you know, that seems very, very small compared to, you know, what, what I've been feeling. And so, to be honest, it was kind of like, okay, that's just another – another bump in the road. That's another thing, you know, coming at me this year. Um, you know, I think obviously if the stuff hadn't happened in January, I would probably be very devastated and hurt by it. Um, but with that stuff happening, I mean, this was very small compared to, you know, the the tragedy that I had uh, gone through. Speaking of Sabrina, you referenced, you're referencing your relationship with Kobe. Um, can you describe the relationship with Kobe and really that day, the emotions of actually speaking one of the few people to speak there and then playing that night. Yeah, um, you know, got really close to him for, uh, I think, a year and a half ago almost, brought his daughter to one of our games. Um, and then from there kind of became very, very close friends. We talked a few times a week. I'd go out there. I'd help coach his team. I worked out with his daughter's team. Um, we talked all the time. I had just seen him, you know, a couple weeks before that when he came to one of my games in L.A. and then, was planning on seeing him at the UConn game, uh, you know, two weeks after that ha- had happened. Um, r- obviously crazy and, and definitely knew um, everyone that was on board aside from the pilot, uh, just because their families and the team that I had worked out with and coached. Um, and then getting that call to, you know, speak at the memorial, I was uh, kind of filled with emotions, not sure if I should or shouldn't. We had a game that day uh, up at Harvard, um, decided that it, it opportunity that I needed to take and so I did that um and then wasn't able to warm up for the game I don't really remember the game um feeling really sick you know before the game and then uh probably for about a week after my head was still in a cloud uh about it which I didn't know was going to happen but I think everything kind of you know came together and and piled together you know at at one time but uh, it was awesome to be able to do that. Obviously, was very nervous, but um, I'm happy that I was able to do that and, and get through it. Well, Can you, you go ahead, Kiss. Something from that, though, I, that has to be one of the hardest things you've ever done or been through, including speaking at that memorial, then playing in that game that same day. So, can you, in a way, look back on that and draw from it and just say, "Look, like I know whatever the future holds for me is not going to be as hard as that. So, I got this going forward." 100%. I mean, now, you know, you've been thinking about the draft, they're doing it virtually, and they want me to speak on the behalf of those uh, families and the three girls. And even that seems so, you know, little compared to what I went through speaking in front of all those people and in front of the world. And so kind of going through that, nothing seems scary anymore. And then obviously having to play on ESPN right after that and um, against a top five team and then being able to win. Um, I mean, there's no excuse for anyone that is good, feels down that day, anyone that feels sick, anything, um, especially me. Uh, I think I've realized that you've know, you got to find a way to play through it. Well, you showed amazing poise both in the ceremony and then playing the game later on. So uh, incredible strength. I want to lighten it up a little bit here um, just because, I, I, you know, we could go down a rabbit hole of, of difficult times and emotions and uh, – I, I want to talk about your game in particular, and I, I mentioned that uh, I had done a little bit of a deep dive here. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on a game that you played when you were at Miramonte, and I call it the don't blow on, on her game. Which side Christian, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a little trash talk from Sabrina here. Can you fill everybody else in who, who would not know this story? Yeah. No, that was a huge game. Uh, for us that Brookside Christian game um, they had posted on on Twitter and Instagram had a poll about how much they thought they were going to beat us by um, so I was excited um, you know their coaching staff was on our side uh, during warm-ups so they were on our side of half court during warm-ups and kind of in our way so it, the beef had started way before the game had had even started um, and you know their fans and their coaches they brought in a lot of people and uh, I mean, I was, I was amped up and juiced up. And so then when the coach yelled, um, was kind of alluding to the fact that I was flopping and said, you know, don't blow on her. Um, I hit a three right then and then looked right back at him and, and repeated that. And 
and went over to their fans, did some stuff to their fans. <laughs> yes. uh, you're, you're doing a lot of self-editing here because uh, I know the exact phrase that you said to the coach. Do you want to try to clean it up a little for the podcast and just say <laughs> what you I told him? <laughs> I mean, there was probably an F-bomb in there, but I think <laughs> – like, don't blow on me with an F bomb. Looked at him in the eyes. Who knows what else? <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Do you, because you're of uh, Romanian descent, do you trash talk in English or Romanian or both? English, English. I want, I want them to know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> Good, Chris. Oh, I was going to ask you, Sabrina, um, we talked about obviously the people you know, and you talked about Kobe's daughter. Also, Riley uh, was, you know, Steph brought his daughters. Do you consider yourself uh, an advocate or a uh, person to look to for the women's game and, and maybe the pressure that holds of, of being a, a hero to young women's basketball players or people looking up to you? Definitely. Um, I think I've seen it more, you know, now than ever, with girls coming to games and, and looking at me, trying to dress like me, wear, you know, the headband and the knee pads, the shoes, all that, uh, which is really cool because I grew up doing that um, as well. And so uh, obviously with Steph's, you know, girls, it was cool. I've known them for a while and it's um, it's awesome to be able to kind of be that inspiration to them and um, that role model because they have one and it's so many in their life. And so it's been able uh, to be a blessing to be able to give that to them and, and try and give back to the game in, in any way that I can. Now, I have two young daughters, and we've actually sat on the couch and put on your games, too, and I've showed them, you know, and told them to pay attention to you on the court. So at what point in your life did you kind of start sensing that that was happening, that, that the attention was really starting to firmly get on you in that uh, leadership role? Yeah. Uh, these, I think these last couple of years at Oregon, um, we've been playing at a higher level, more and more fans coming out to games and um, more stuff uh, being played on TV about us and honestly more recognition to women in sports. And so I think these last, you know, couple of years um, at Oregon, just seeing, you know, how it's changed over the years from no one coming to games to the games being packed and the impact that we have on on girls and um, you know they come up to us after games some of them are crying some of them are shaking just so excited to meet us and you really understand that uh, you know we are that role model to them and so we have to act like it on and off the court. You know I was talking to uh, to Kelly your high school coach at Miramonte and he told me that he was amazed at some of the scenes on the road and that you literally would sign autographs for 90 minutes after a game. And you could have kept, I mean, you would sign until the last person got an autograph. What, you know, most people won't do that. I mean, they'll do some, but not 90 minutes. What's your mindset? And especially when you see little girls that maybe like, like Casey's girls are young, um, what are you trying to get across with them? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard for me to say no. Um, I don't think I've really ever said no to something like that it's usually someone from our team administration having to pull me away because I have to uh, go do an interview or, go, or our bus is leaving uh usually always the last one to get on the bus everyone's waiting on me just because I'm sitting there wanting to sign everything and take pictures and and talk to people um but understanding that I was that girl one day uh you know back in the day when I was looking up to athletes and you know, wanting to talk to them. And so I'm just trying to, you know, sympathize with them and, and be that to them and, and show them, you know, hopefully the right way to do it and uh, being appreciative of everyone, no matter if, you know, they're a girl, boy, older or younger. You're about a week from your life changing once again, and you're going to go to the WNBA. We all know it, but you're very humble. Um, your thoughts on reaching a dream like that to play professional basketball on that stage? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, going to hopefully be very excited. Um, it's obviously been a dream since, since I've been young to play professional basketball. And so, uh, excited to see, you know, all that comes with it. Obviously life's going to change, probably not be, you know, in Walnut Creek and be here as much, but we're, you know, wherever I do end up playing, I'm excited and excited for the challenges. And, um, also, you know, the triumph that comes with, uh, how exciting it is to be a professional and, and everything that comes with it. Let's get real. Have you looked at property in New York yet? Are you going to rent an apartment? <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going number one to New York. We know that. So what's, what's the deal with that? You know, <laughs> actually provide housing. Uh, I talked to them on the phone a little while ago, and, and they have an apartment complex that's, that's near Barclays Center. 
um, that they house. I mean, you can live there if you want, or unless you want to pay rent somewhere else, which I will not be doing if I'm there. So uh, they pay for housing in, in apartments that are really nice looking. So um, I think that's where I'll, if I'm if I end up there, that's where I'll be living. You're trying to figure out right now which shoe company you're going to sign for. I know that's probably why you're hanging out with Steph and he's pushing Under Armour. You have Nike, who I'm sure you worked fairly closely with being in Oregon. So, I mean, what is the decision making there? How, how heavy are you weighing that? Because I know that I, I read a really cool bio on you when it came to choosing your school that you kind of just up one day and went. So I know that those big kind of decisions and public decisions aren't really your, your brand, but you know, how do you feel about that? Yeah, um, obviously I have a connection with Nike and Under Armour as well, just through Steph. I have been a Nike athlete for 10 years now. And then um, obviously there's a lot of opportunity with, you know, Steph's brand and us both being from the Bay Area and, and kind of being, you know, similar, I guess, in our values and uh, how we carry ourselves. So, you know, there's an opportunity for both. I think I'm going to have to weigh out, you know, my pros and cons of, you know, going with Nike or, you know, going with him and, and him and Under Armour. But, you know, hopefully I'll be able to, to make the best decision for myself and my family and uh, try and not stress out about it too much. I know you're going to um, elegantly sidestep this, but your college coach has said that he anticipates at some point you are going to have your own sneaker, like the, the Air Sabrina or the Sabrina One, or I, I don't know. Have, do you even think about that in the back of your mind, or is that just way too far down the road? Yeah, uh, I don't I, – I didn't think about it before. Um, but I think now, you know, talking to Steph and, and talking to shoe companies, they, I think they see that vision um, that I could be that first, you know, female athlete that has her own shoe and that actually sells and that people want to buy. Um, and so I think now I've, I've given it some thought. Um, obviously, it's a little bit down the road because it's a process and have to be able to establish yourself in the league. But um, it is an exciting, you know, thing that I would love to do and, and be a part of. And um, I'll make sure to get you all a pair of shoes if, if it comes out. There we go. I love that too. What color, what color is it going to look like? Do we have a design? Do we have a mock-up? What do we have? What do we no, have? we have absolutely nothing, but ah. there'll be different colorways. So you tell me what you want and I can make it happen. Yeah. Will it make us better at shooting so you don't hustle us in uh, Walnut Creek? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll make you better. If I see you have the shoes, I won't try and hustle you. You've got to get like a slurpy colorway. Give us some of that. Give us some of that. Give us that slurpy colorway. Sabrina, um, it was obviously talked about that, you know, sports in front of no crowds, and you talked about the big crowds you were getting at Oregon. How important is it to have crowds and fans for athletes um, in a game? It's game changing, um, you know, from having, you know, to play in arenas where no one supported women's basketball and there was literally no one there to um, coming, playing at home and, you know, having arenas packed, filled and actually like them being invested into the game and staying till the end, no matter what the score was. And, you know, knowing the roster, knowing the players, knowing everything. Uh, it's awesome to be able to see and we built that in Eugene and I hope you know it lasts for a very long time but it I mean it's game changing the adrenaline rush you get from just having a sellout crowd. Um, are you familiar by any chance I'm just this is just a shot in the dark here with a, a guy on Instagram by the name of Gary V. Gary V? Yeah. Um, no. he's kind of, okay um, good then we'll edit this out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> gosh no. Uh, he's he's a uh, kind of a motivational guy. It's a, he has an amazing story, but he came from Belarus and uh, with his family when he was young, worked uh, for his father, uh, turned it into a multi-million dollar business, and now he's got a media company and he's he's very very wealthy and does a lot of mo motivational stuff. But because he came from Belarus, uh, he has talked about the struggle that that outsiders may have or what drives them. And I saw a quote from Diana Taurasi who said that uh, you share an immigrant mindset. And what does that mean to you? Because in some ways it likely fuels you. Yeah, I mean, it, it is completely different, um, you know, than, than most probably think. Um, you know, my parents came here, didn't speak any English. And so they came and tried to find a, a better life for, for our family. And so 
they work and they work hard and everything that, you know, they've gotten, they've worked for. And so kind of just having that mindset of nothing's given to you, nothing comes easy. And uh, if you want it, you got to go get it. And so I think that's always been the mindset that I've had just because that's the mindset that my parents had because they had to, they had to do it. And so just being able to see that and then, um, you know, also they didn't know a lot about basketball. And so I think having the, the pressure off of us about having to play, having to have trainers and really just finding a love for a sport and then committing, you know, to, to trying to be the best that you can is what I've learned. But, you know, everybody says they work hard. When I read quotes about you where it says you and your brother would quote, play through the blood. And I, I don't know if, if, if you were elbowing him more or he was elbowing you more, but a lot of people don't want to play through the blood in a basketball game. Yeah, no, we fought all the time. Um, if he won, if I like it got physical and especially as we got older, um, there was elbows, there was, I mean, it got bad. Um, and obviously I'm so competitive, so I, we wouldn't stop until I would win. And then after we won, it'd be done. Um, <laughs> we could go home. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it was fun. It made me better. It made him better. Um, and I think that's why, you know, he sees my value and he sees value in w women in sports just because he knows how hard I worked and how nothing came easy. Sabrina, this has obviously been an odd time. You talk about your pots and pans workout, but are you doing anything fun? What are, what are some hobbies you've maybe learned that you are getting back to because of this virus or you're doing now? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to clean up my room. I uh, hear look through some of that stuff. Uh, I've been lazy about it though. I do read. Um, I'm also in my last quarter of school now for my master's program. So trying to get motivated and staying on top of um, my schoolwork and, and all that, just because I know, and, you know, in a few months, I'm probably going to be living a different life that's crazy and hectic and busy. And so wanting to make sure I can finish that master's program in, in these last, uh, in these last months. Gotcha. You got any oh, shows you're it. binging right now? You got any, uh, what's, what's keeping you yes. distracted? Money heist. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Great show. Yes. But Casey's in love with the Tiger King. I still haven't finished it. Well, so I, maybe I, maybe I should, I should rephrase me. that. I should rephrase <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> he, I know he wants to ask about Tiger King. I do not. I don't. You don't? I just wanted to know what she was binging. I'm done with Tiger King. Every single, every single interview I've had has asked me about Tiger King, and so that's the next thing I'm going to watch. I have one more season of uh, Money Heist, and then I'm on a Tiger King. <laughs> you know what? There's, there's a new season of Money Heist that uh, season four just came sure. out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, uh, it's interesting. I, I didn't even realize when I first blundered into it that it was a Spanish language show, um, you know, dubbed in English, but they do it so well, and the storyline is so good. I was just, I was sucked in from the, like the first five minutes. I was like, wow, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. Did you, did you watch Ozark? I, you know what? I had started Ozark and then kind of diverted and now I'm back on Ozark. Okay, good, to, good, good. Yeah. I heard season three is incredible of Ozark, but I, I, I got to get good. through. I, I got to get through a little bit more. Yeah, man. I'm at the end of season two and I got my wife started on it. So now I have to wait for her to watch season three. Yeah. It's like anytime I see anyone say anything about it, I'm dying. So I don't want anything spoiled. Yeah. I but, finished yeah. it uh, last week. So it was good. Sabrina, are you excited about uh, the last dance though, Michael, the, 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 Bulls, the Bulls documentary that's coming out? I know I cannot wait for that. Yes. I'm so excited. Um, I know everyone's been talking about it on social media and I'm excited to be able to watch, you know, something on, on TV that I'm excited about besides binge, binge watching shows. So I'm excited for that to come out and be able to get like the inside kind of scoop on everything about him. I think you're going to find a lot of areas that you relate because Michael, much like Kobe was notorious for, we're going to play until I win. And that's like losing is not an option. I don't care how long we have to be here. And I know, you know, that's part of what drives you. I want to read you a quote. Um, and it says, perfection is not attainable. But if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. That's from Vince Lombardi, the former uh, legendary Packers coach in Green Bay. Do you think that accurately describes you? Um, I do. Uh, I, I've never actually heard that quote and I really like it. So I'll have you send that to me uh, when we're done. But um, for sure, I mean, and Kobe always used to tell me, um, 
you know, real, uh, gosh, what was it? Real comes without effort. He used to say, uh, it, it was along the same lines, uh, real sharpness comes without effort. And it basically was you perfect everything that you can, you perfect your craft, you try and be the best that you can, and then it looks effortless. And, you know, people think it's effortless. And so it's kind of goes along that line, just trying to be the best that you can chase what you can, what's in your control, and, and you can only control that and everything kind of takes care of itself. Um, I know in the background you have some Warriors pictures and there's a pennant just up there. We can bear, we saw it when you were setting up your shot, but there it is right there. Uh, what do you think of the Warriors? I know this wasn't the year, but next year has to be a pretty exciting um, prospect for me. At least I think they're going to be back to playoff level, if not championship caliber. So what's your breakdown on the Warriors right now? Yeah, I mean, they have all the right pieces. They have the right coach and the, and the coaching staff, so they're going to be just fine. Uh, but obviously excited to get, you know, those players healthy to see who they bring in um, and excited to see them, you know, winning and, and happy again. Uh, but I think all of us know that they're going to be just fine, uh, especially when Steph and Clay get back on the court. Um, and, and Steve Kerr just does such a great job with them and um, obviously with them on and off the court. But as a coach, I mean, he – I love watching him. I love, you know, reading about him because I just love how he does everything at such a high level. And so – um, they'll be just fine and they'll be back to winning and, and back to kind of playing that Warriors basketball that we know. When you read a quote from Steph where he says, Sabrina is a legend in her own right, how does that hit you? It's Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think about. Obviously, try and take away, uh, uh, kind of put aside the fact that we're friends and read it uh, in awe still. Like, oh gosh, Steph Curry just said that. Uh, obviously I have so many people send it to me, family, friends, like, oh my gosh, it's Steph. And then it's like, yeah, but you know, we talk all the time, we're friends. And so uh, it's obviously honoring and humbling to, to see that because I think, you know, the same about him. Sabrina, we, Larry joked about it, but your phone and you know so many celebrities now, you're amongst them now. You are one of the people people look at. Is there someone that you're in awe of a little bit or you want to meet that would kind of be like, oh, that's someone, someone major? Yeah, I mean, I've never met LeBron. That'd be really cool. I mean, there's so many, um, like, idols and, and people that I would I would love to meet. Um, I don't text that many cool people on the <laughs> uh, Kobe and Steph are definitely, you know, the top people that have been in my phone. And uh, every time, you know, their name or their caller ID pops up when they call or, or anything, it's always uh, kind of takes me back. And a little bit by surprise, like, oh, you know, Steph Curry's calling or – or Kobe's calling. So that was always uh, cool. And I don't think I'll ever kind of get over that feeling. <laughs> That's got to be crazy. I don't know if, if you're around your teammates and you go like, you know, if there's a few of them and you go, Oh yeah, it's, it's Steph calling. Like what? <laughs> Come on. No, I, I usually don't want like, like saying it around people. Cause I don't want, I don't want to make anyone like jealous or, I don't know. I, I just keep it pretty quiet. I guess the only time it was my birthday in December and I had a text on my phone from Kobe and Steph kind of like back to back and uh, my teammates were there and they're like, okay, that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me a lot also. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey, I'll text you and then maybe you could, you can brag to people about that. <laughs> there you, go. I, I, you know what? You're, you're going to be the most famous person that, uh, that we've interviewed in a while. So. And we've had some good guests. We actually had Gabe Kapler from the San Francisco Giants, Evander Kane from the Sharks. So I think you're going to jump to the top of our list here really, really quickly. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Talking with your coach, and um, I was trying to find out what, what really motivates you. And so the question is, are you driven more by the joy of winning or the fear of failure? Yeah, I mean, I don't really fear failure because there's growth and failure as well. Um, I definitely, you know, hate losing more than I love winning. Um, and that's, you know, I live and die by that. But, um, you know, there's always growth in, in kind of every, you know, aspect of winning, losing a game. Um, you know, but I'm not really afraid to fail. Um, I would say that's not really something that, that I'm scared of just because I know failure is usually not an option. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to strive for, for something greater and kind of see a bigger purpose. And uh, that's what I'm going to work hard to, to get to. And so um, there really is no other option than that. 
Sabrina, I want to ask you uh, real quick, um, no matter where you go, you're always from here. So the Bay Area, what does it mean to you and how do you plan on promoting the Bay Area in the future, whether you're in New York or around the world traveling, playing basketball? Yeah, I mean, I was born, you know, in Walnut Creek, raised in Walnut Creek, still live in Walnut Creek. So I love it here. Um, I love being able to come back and play here. Um, you know, seeing all, all my teachers from elementary school, middle school, high school come to the games and support me. And so this will always be home no matter what, um, just by spending, you know, 22 years of my life here. Um, I'm happy that the WNBA season isn't like a full-time job. You know, it, it is about three to four months, but then there's a lot of time to be able to come back home and uh, try and impact the community here, get back to my schools and, and give back to them. So I am excited to be able to, you know, have that opportunity to, to do that to you know a, a city that gave so much to me all right let's finish up with something fun here because hopefully in a few months we'll be able to get back to normal right and um well you'll probably be in new york at that point but if at some point down the road we can get together and maybe i meet you at heather farms the outdoor court or somewhere um based on i think i think we had a pretty good rapport over the past half hour or so uh, and we shoot, are you still going to try to take every last cent that I have on me, or is it going to be a little bit more cordial? <laughs> Hopefully I'll have signed a contract to where I won't need to try and get your money. Um, but if I don't, I will definitely be trying to, to have a game of horse or something and, and get some money off of you. So just so you know, hopefully leave your wallet at home that day. Wow. Oh. Wow. Would there, would there like, be someone? Sounds like the, the, the gauntlet's been thrown down already. I'm, I'm going to have to start working on my game, clearly. You have to. Sabrina, if you were to have an ultimate horse competition that's been talked about that the NBA might do that, who would you want to go up and shoot against? Uh, not Steph. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I mean, a horse is fun. You're, you, you try and play against a player that doesn't have a lot of trick shots. Uh, Cause that's the hard part. It's not really shooting the threes or the free throws or shots, uh, you know, normal shots that you practice. It's kind of the between the legs behind the back hook shot that gets you. Um, and I don't really practice that ever. And so I would say that, that if someone I, that I play against has a lot of that in their arsenal, then they win. So you guys take some notes. If you can come You're up with Larry, some Larry, Larry. Uh, Larry yeah. trick shots are the way to beat her. Trick shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're we're a few decades removed from behind the back, throw it off the glass, and then throw it down. I was I was talking about the mini hoop though. Yeah, Larry, you're pretty good at mini hoop, man. Bring her we in. We have a nerf. We have a nerf hoop up in the the Channel Seven Sports office, and uh, the Harlem Globetrotters have come in a couple of times, and we have destroyed them. So, <laughs> wow. and, and they would they they refused to play for money because they could see what was coming. So. I'm just gonna say, you're invited to come on in, and we'll just see how it, we'll just see how it goes, Sabrina. We'll just yep. see how it goes. I'm down. I'm coming. All right. Excellent. Be great. Well, that's a good place to to wrap it up. Thank you so much. You know, it's it's great to see somebody from the community that is just an outstanding role model in so many ways. You carry yourself with so much with so much poise and pride and. Uh, I know I speak for so many people uh, when I say, we wish you, like, the sky is the limit, and I can't wait to see you go number one to New York and then light up the WNBA, and, uh, and, and we can all celebrate with you because it's, it's great just having you as a representative of the Bay Area. Yes, well, thank you guys so much for having me, and uh, tell everyone thank you as well. All right. And I want that pots and pans workout because – Okay, I, I got you. I'm okay. a size 11 and a half, by the way. 11 and a half. Yeah, let me see, let me hear the sizes. <laughs> Chris, always trying to get free stuff. That we no, 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 no. I just yeah. want to be able to shoot as good as Sabrina. All right. <laughs> yeah. too. Thanks so much. We appreciate your time. <laughs> yes, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Bye. Sabrina. Bye. All right. Bye, Sabrina. With authority.